I mean, LA is a great city um, for many reasons, but like a lot of people come here to find fame and lose themselves. And I, I, I mean, I, I was on that track too, but um, I think like, just, I know who I am at the core as a person. And I know that like, I lead with intention. Um, and I, and I, and sometimes, you know, I, I struggle between like being misunderstood, but also understanding that like, I've only shown parts of myself too. So in building my business, I was very much focused on saying what I felt in the most extreme way that shocked the hell out of people and made people uncomfortable. That was the brand that I started. That's the brand that I built. And that's what people reacted to the most. So that when I saw that, that's what people wanted. I just kept feeding them that, feeding them that. In the world of cancel culture where everybody's afraid to be honest or to hurt people's feelings or uh, to say whatever people are thinking, I just felt like, damn, if real is rare right now, let me just put it to like the max. And, and I would be uncomfortable, I would not be uncomfortable, but I would walk in a room and I would, there would be rooms I'd walk in and I'd feel like just the air suck out of the room like when I walk in. And I would find humor in that, you know? <laughs> which is kind of sick when I think about it. But then now, like, I know when I walk in the room now, I know that even if there are different perceptions of who I am, because I've evolved and I've started showing more layers to me, that I know when I walk in now, like, I know there's respect. I know people will respect me for what I've built. And I respect, like, the fact that I went from a person who didn't have a home, a person who didn't have family with them, a person who had lost some of the closest people to him, been shot, molested, all these different things, can say it freely without fear of judgment. Um, and then also can say like, I've also figured out the other side of, you know, pursuing my dreams and getting past the fear of um, leaving a job and not pursuing my passion. And, and I, you know, I figured it out. How? Hell. <laughs> um, How did you figure that I out? I think the one, the one thing that I will say is that I wrote in my book that I learned is that in life you have to live with, um, it's faith over fear. So I used to get on planes and be afraid I was gonna die. Well, who wants to do things where they think they're gonna die? Yeah, there's a chance a plane could fall out the sky. I mean, but you know, the reality is if you look in America, not many planes have fallen out the sky. Not, you know, not many, but there have been some. So I started just going, okay, I'm gonna start focusing on my faith instead of fear. I'm gonna put faith over fear. When I had a job and I wanted to start my career, I didn't have the faith that I could do it because I was afraid, like, because literally I'm in a business where you eat, where you, you eat what you kill. <clears throat> and so to start, to leave a job where I was making 5,000 every other week, which to me from coming from nothing was, I was rich. Yeah, I mean, I have a Mercedes, I have the cheapest Mercedes Benz at the time, but I still Mercedes. What about that watch? What, this watch? <laughs> Light work, you know? <laughs> but, um, but you know, it's real too, by the way. Um, <laughs> Because there were days I didn't have the real watch, you know. I mean, the make it till you fake it thing, whatever. Um, but no, I mean, I, uh, I just, I knew. I said, okay, I was faced with the choice of like staying in my career and lying to people uh, because that's what they wanted me to do, or leave my job without a plan and just figure it out. So I left and I figured it out. I mean, it was a journey, but it was hard. Um, and that's why, like nowadays, with this newer generation, everybody wants this microwavable success. They want it right now. Social media. I want the car right now. I want this right now. I want that. Um, nah. And Floyd, I, I credited Floyd Mayweather this at my award show. He said to me, he said, because um, I called him one day, I said, oh, I want this. I'm, I was living in a studio apartment, and I had a Dodge Challenger with expired tags. I had just started my business. I had no money. I was 323 pounds at the time, um, and, but I was really focused on, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. He said, listen, you're going to get all the things you want, the watch, the jewelry, the cars, the house. You're going to get all the money. You're going to get everything you want. You're going to become the Floyd Mayweather of media, but it's not going to make you happy. It's not going to change anything about how you feel right now, just so you know that. And I remember being, I, I felt insulted because I'm like, this is a, a billionaire telling me this. And I got off the phone, probably talked shit about him. Um, and then, you know, one day I got it all. I mean, I don't have the billion yet, but, you know, a billion wasn't even a goal. But after you reach multi-millions, you're like, okay, I want to be a billionaire. Um, it didn't change anything. In fact, it added more stresses that I didn't have before because now friends started changing. Um, you know, family started treating me like a celebrity and not a person. Um, you know, people start creating narratives about me. One lady, I'll just say this really quick. I, I, I low-key want to strangle her, but I'm in therapy. <laughs> you know, I'm openly gay. I love being gay. I take pride in being gay. I, I just, I'm so, I couldn't, I wouldn't even know what being straight would feel like at this point. And I, 
shout out to everybody who's been through divorces. We don't have those issues at your rate yet because we just barely got the right to get married. <laughs> um, but I remember this YouTuber going online and saying, oh yeah, Jason lost all that weight. He might have dirty blood. Basically saying I have HIV. Um, now the old Jason, the things I would have done to that person, I would have had my investigator find her address. I would have sent her flowers with a necklace camera on it so she know I saw her. Like, I mean, I would have did so many things um, on top of going online and putting her ugly children on there, right? But I did it, because <laughs> I'm in therapy, I'm in therapy. <laughs> she do got some ugly kids though, I'm just saying. But I don't attack people's children because that's not nice, but I'm in a safe space. Hey, everybody watching. <laughs> you know, and she know who she is. But anyway, um, I, didn't, I didn't attack her children or her or anything. You know, but it's one of those things where, like, I don't have to defend what isn't true. Like, I, I, we work in a world online where there's people who aren't in the room who are going to have judgments, who are going to have takeaways, who are going to believe whatever they believe. I don't own none of that. I learned in my own journey that, like, I own what I do and who I am, but I don't own how people digest that and what they perceive and whatever they want to control it, say about me. And, and it, you know, more, first I want to sue everybody that has something to say. Then I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that because I start getting sued by a whole bunch of people for nothing. So, yeah, it's just one of those things where, I mean, the journey of finding the faith of making it through and um, finding my way has just been something that I've had to just figure out.